Hi, my name is Jai. I'm the Field Application Engineer and Trainer for BenQ Australia. And today we'll be looking at EasyWrite 6 Cloud Whiteboard software. This is unique whiteboarding software to BenQ. And so we have our interactive flat panel here. And I just want to show you how you can access this cloud whiteboarding app. Obviously, from our center screen here, we have our whiteboard icon. We can select that to dive straight back into our whiteboard session. Or you can also access it from our side menu here just by selecting the EasyWrite icon there as, as well. Once we launch in, I'll use the center icon there, we have our whiteboard ready to go. Now you'll notice here we have a, a massive blank canvas and we have a couple of different menus along the base of our whiteboard. And today I'm going to start with this main middle uh, section here. This is where we'll find the bulk of the tools that we want to use during our whiteboarding session or during our lesson. And so straight away we have our annotation tool. By default it's selected and we can just start drawing on the panel. Uh, each of your panels come with a couple of pens. You can use your pens or you can subsequently use your fingers as well. So we have multiple points of touch on this panel um, ready to go. In our annotation section here we have uh, a, a couple of different options here. We can change the color of our annotation and we can change the thickness of the annotation we draw on the board here. So you can see straight away that annotation changes. You'll also notice in this pen menu we have a couple of different annotation options here. So we're in our, our standard drawing mode here or writing mode. Underneath that we have a highlighter mode now and by default it's selected on yellow and so we can actually highlight over the top of anything on our panel, whether that's annotation or any Im images that we have on screen there as well. And finally, the, the third mode here is what we call our dual pen modes. So each of your panels, as I mentioned, comes with a set of pens and you'll notice there's a, a fine tip and a thick tip. And what we're able to do here is select different colors. So for the thin tip, I might select light blue. And then for the thick tip, I'll select green. And so when I write with a thin tip, it comes out in light blue. When I change to the the thick tip, it comes out in green. Alternatively, you can use two pens at once and use a thick tip on one pen and a thin tip on another there to have the same result. This is also another great feature if you have your students up at the panel, give them a pen each um, using a thin tip and a thick tip and being able to write in two different colors simultaneously there as well. So it really increases the collaboration within that classroom space too. Obviously, if we can annotate, we need to be able to erase as well. So next door to our annotation tool here in our middle main menu, we can select our erasing tool. And so once that's selected, I can just start using my pen to erase on screen there. So really straightforward. If I go back down to this eraser tool, there's a, the middle icon here allows me to select a whole entire line or a whole entire annotation there to erase. So for instance, I can just tap on different annotation and, and erase that completely there. So it's obviously not as accurate as that, that first annotation mode. And then the third option here in this toolbar is to erase all. So if I select that, that will erase all content on the page there. The final way we can actually erase is using what we call palm eraser. So I can just either use the flat of my hand or my fist and I can just start erasing on the panel here like so. And that will change depending on the annotation or the erasing mode I should say down in the bottom here as well. So if we only want to erase a little bit of that annotation, I can use that as well. So just be aware of that. Next all to that, we have uh, a text box uh, icon here, and this allows us to actually input text via our on-screen keyboard. So it's similar to what we do in our Word documents and PDF documents, really straightforward there. Just simply type using the on-screen keyboard and that will appear on screen. We can then go in and edit that, that text accordingly there as well. Uh, under, uh, next door to that, I should say, we have another sub-menu here that allows us to use sticky notes, uh, import shapes onto our whiteboard, and the third icon here is our template button. And so we have a, a lot of uh, pre-made templates here, and we can just sort, scroll down here to see those. So we have things like uh, manuscript paper or handwriting templates, checklists, that kind of thing, so really handy. And when we select one of these, for instance, let me select the manuscript paper here, that will just uh, import that background and that becomes anchored to the back there. And we'll, then we can simply select our uh, annotation tool here and then start writing on here straight away. The other great thing about this template button is that we can actually import our own templates as well. So once again, we could select from the internal storage there or we could plug our USB drive into the front of the panel 
and select a template from there. All right, next door to our uh, template button, we have our import button. So we can import our own images, our own documents, uh, or even previous whiteboarding sessions straight into this new whiteboarding session as well. And all you do here is select whichever document or whichever content you want to bring in. Once again, this will open our import file option. We select the file we want and that will import directly into our whiteboard. Next door to our import function, we have a toolbox and we have around 10 different tools within this toolbox. Think of these tools as apps within the whiteboarding app itself. So they'll just be floating on top of our screen here. And whilst we're using those tools, we can continue to use our whiteboard as well. So starting in the top row here, we have um, mathematics tools essentially uh, that we would use every day in a math class. So ruler tool, uh, protractor, uh, compass as well, and obviously set square too. Um, and then we also have a calculator. So they're all maths based tools within that front bar there. So all you need to do to access these, and I'll just um, select this one here, we can move these around, we can change the angle, and we can obviously um, use these annotation tools to select what we actually want to show there as well. So really straightforward. And you can do this with all those tools there. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about these tools, we'll have a more in-depth look at uh, EasyWrite 6 as whiteboarding software in a subsequent video. So make sure you check that out as well. Down the bottom here with the rest of these tools, we have a couple of timing tools. So we have a countdown timer and a stopwatch. The countdown timer is one that's used uh, quite regularly. And this is great for examination periods or tests, or even if you're just trying to time an activity or a group-based activity within the classroom. So we may want that activity to go for, for 15 minutes, for instance, and then we can hit start. And this will count down on our screen there, and it's quite a big countdown timer. And we can obviously pause this countdown timer or hit stop. Um, and we can also minimize this just by pressing this top button here. And you'll notice now that countdown timer has appeared in the, in the top right corner of our screen. Once that countdown reaches zero, it'll start flashing. And if we have volume on our soundbar turned up, uh, a little alarm will sound, little chimes will sound. So even if we're not looking at our panel at the time, we'll be made aware that that countdown timer has finished. Obviously, we can just select this timer again to either stop that timer or reset it or exit out of that timer as well. Uh, also in our toolbox, so we've got a couple of timing tools, we have our scoreboard functionality. And so we're always sort of having group-based activities within that classroom and different teams within that classroom. So we can select up to eight different teams once we hit start here, you'll notice it generically names those teams A through the H in this example. Um, obviously, we can change those team names as well just by tapping uh, on the team name. It brings up our floating keyboard and we can type in the team name there if we'd like to have those uh, changed. And all we have to do here is just swipe up on our uh, team numbers to change that. And you'll notice that whoever's winning has a little crown. Um, above their name. So it's a great way to keep track of those, those team-based activities. We can also minimize this once again up in the top right-hand corner there and we can see those team scores, which is quite handy too. And then finally, we have um, a random number generator or a draw uh, functionality. So this allows us to sort of number our students and put them into teams by randomly generating those students' numbers. And the, the final icon here is a what we call team post. And this allows us to divide our panel into two or three segments. So when I hit team post, uh, ask me how many teams um, I'd like. And basically what that's actually asking is, is how many different um, sections I want. So if I select three here and hit start, you'll notice that this is a full screen application. Our whiteboard is still floating underneath this, this team post tool, but it, it divides my board into three in this example. And you'll notice we have different annotation tools down the bottom of this. So we can just select different color right on these. And that annotation will be dedicated to each of those panels. So it's a really great way to get students involved um, on their own working space within that panel as well. There's a whole range of different functionality here how we can save and share and, and um, obviously set different questions. And we'll go over those in that um, other comprehensive EasyWrite video as well. For now, I'm just going to exit. It's going to ask me if I want to save. We'll talk about saving a little bit later on. All right, so we've had a look at our main toolbar there. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of different tools, a lot of different functionality there. Um, and, and there's quite a lot to, to learn and know and utilize within that classroom space. So have a play around with that and become accustomed to those tools. Obviously, the more you use it, the more you'll become comfortable with it and, and get more, more use out of it. 
Moving across to our right side toolbar here, we have undo and redo functionality. Um, obviously, we, we're sort of used to, to using this. So you can see here as I'm hitting undo and redo, if you've ever used any program ever, you'll be used to this kind of functionality. Next door to that, we um, we can change the background really quickly to different colors or sort of um, different uh, different shapes and, and, and functionality there as well. We can also custom create our color as well. So if you don't want a white background, we could change that to black or blue or red or whatever we like just on the fly. It's kind of like a fill option that we're used to in, in design programs. Next to all that, we have a page count. So our whiteboard can work on a different page. I can add a new page and, and go to the next page there. Um, and you can have hundreds of pages in this whiteboard now. Um, so if you'd like to utilize this like a, a PowerPoint file structure or PDF file structure, this is a great way to do that. You can just keep adding pages and, and navigating there. And the way we would navigate through that is actually pressing on the, the page number there. It brings up my page manager there on the right-hand side of the screen and we can see a, a quick thumbnail of uh, what, uh, what the content is on those pages. And I can obviously just um, tap on these pages to navigate around. I can also change um, the order of these pages just by tapping and holding and, and changing that that way. And then you'll notice when I select a page, I have a little sub menu here as well. And that allows me to duplicate an existing page. Um, so that's great if we wanna show progression from one page to the next without having to redraw and rewrite everything. So it's a really great time saving feature there. I can obviously add a new page from this page manager or I can select the plus symbol down the bottom here to add a new page. And obviously the trash can button there allows me to delete that page um, as well if I no longer need it. So that's our page manager, just lives down the bottom there by selecting our pages. And then finally in this right hand corner, we have an overview or a quick snapshot of the content on this page. And you'll notice that we have a couple of different icons here too. I mentioned before that you can utilize our whiteboard as a like a PDF file or PowerPoint file where we have separate pages and we can just navigate and jump from one page to the next. And that's how our EasyWrite software has worked for many, many years. But now this uh, EasyWrite 6 software actually works on what we call an infinite canvas. And so what that means is, is that we can actually zoom out of this and there's a lot more space outside of that, that page system that you can see here. Um, and so we can sort of bounce in and out by using the zoom functionality there. I can go back to um, full screen just by selecting this button here, or I can just shrink that down to give me more room um, really quickly outside of that, what we call our reference zone here. And you can see this dotted line around, around there, which is our reference zone. Obviously, we don't need to jump in and out by using that menu either. We can just use um, pinching gestures if I use my select option here to sort of zoom in and out um, as well. So it's a really quick way to sort of navigate outside of that space. And if we wanna jump back and just fill that screen with the actual existing page, we can use our options there to do so. So um, you, you can use it either way. If you wanna use infinite canvas and have lots of information on your screen at once, you can use the option down that bottom right hand corner. Or if you prefer to use a standard page system, it's up to you, whatever works best for your teaching style there as well. So we've had a look at our main tool, uh, main two toolbars here. We'll jump over to the, the left side of the board here and we've just got a couple more features to have a look at. In the bottom left hand corner here, we have our menu option. Obviously we have our generic settings and this is where we can share and uh, save our files as well. Just by selecting this icon, we can share via QR code or email or we can save our whiteboarding content as either an image file, a PDF, an interactive whiteboard file or a dedicated EasyWrite file. The great thing about IWB files or interactive whiteboard files and EasyWrite files is that they're re-editable files. So that allows us to reopen this lesson that we've done previously, go back in, re-edit or add more content to it as well. Underneath that, we can obviously open um, a previous whiteboarding session here as well. Um, and our whiteboarding sessions automatically save. So you'll find them here. Um, we can obviously go into submenus here and rename, delete, or, or change the, the file save structure there as well. In uh, next in our menu, we can start a brand new whiteboarding session using the icon with the little plus symbol here. And we can obviously exit our whiteboard as well and return to our main screen or our home screen there. Next door to our main menu there, we have a, a recording function. So if I press this, you'll notice up in the top right hand corner there, and that's recording everything that we see on screen here as well. If you have a microphone or you add a microphone to the panel, it can, it's also capable of recording audio. It'll record it for up to 
uh, around 60 minutes uh, in an MP4 file. So we can review that file later on, on the panel itself or on another device too. To stop that recording, simply hit the stop button there. It'll ask us where you want to save that, choose your location and hit the save button. All right, and then finally, next to our uh, record feature is our cloud whiteboard feature. So while this is synchronizing, what is Cloud Whiteboard? Cloud Whiteboard allows us to invite our student or any other participants into the same whiteboarding lesson that we have displayed here. So they can be in the same classroom as you are, so you could get all your students to join this session, and they can join via this QR code or simply opening their browser on their computer and inputting the URL there along with the room ID and their own name to join that session. But we can get people to remotely join in as well. So if we're teaching, um, to remote students that aren't in the classroom or, or students are remote learning, we can do that as well. And once they join this session, they can see exactly what's going on in real time on the whiteboard on their own devices. Uh, and you can use this in conjunction with video conferencing software to be able to talk to your students, obviously, at the same time. We've made a lot of improvements to this whiteboarding software, including individual permission settings as well. And you, if you're interested in learning more about our cloud whiteboard experience, check out the EasyWrite 6 video um, that's available right now as well. So we've pretty much covered all the features of the, the cloud whiteboard uh, known as EasyWrite 6, which is BenQ's unique whiteboarding software there. Like I may mention a couple of times during the video, please check out the in-depth EasyWrite 6 cloud whiteboard video. Um, we'll go into much more detail about some of the features we've breezed over today. Um, I hope you found it beneficial and we'll see you next time.